Welcome into Spectating Warzone Solos. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to take down Shaquille Oatmeal. That's how we're going to start it out today. Shaquille thought he was going to pull it off. Shaquille, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> Shaquille! Shaquille, log it in on that butt! My God, ladies and gentlemen, you know the deal. We're going to hop in, dive in, really, splat the ground, and then spectate a random player. Now, the goal is to get better. So, splat. Uh, the goal is to get better. So what, what are we going to do? We're going to take everything we see from this random player. We're going to do our best to learn from all of their mistakes or learn from the good things that they do as well. I think it's going to make a big difference. Either way, we have the one and only Glocks. Glocks. Okay, Glocks. Glocks 9751. Rocking a car 98K. And off rip, I'm going to just tell you, terrible position. All right? I, I, and... Look, I know, I, I hate to just like go in on somebody the second that we see them, but standing out in the open with a car 98K, probably not the greatest idea. I will say, you know, you hop into a game, what's the first thing you wanna do? Which is, you know, something you guys should know by now if you watch my other spectating videos, that is coming with a plan. You need a plan if you're gonna be playing Warzone, because if you don't have a plan, you're basically gonna lose pretty much every game. If it, At the very least, you should have a rough plan. I'm not saying you should drop in and know, all right, I'm going to start at Lowtown. We're going to move over to Superstore. I'm going to rotate over to Hadika Farms, and then we're going to go to Shaheen Manor for the final circle. There's no way you can know that. Literally no way. So there's no reason for you to expect to do something like that. But you should drop in and be like, all right, what is my goal? Drop in with a goal at the very least. Do I want as many eliminations as possible? Do I want to find a place, chill out, and hopefully get a high placement, or do I wanna go for a W based on my positioning and based on the eliminations that I get at the end of the game? I will note, you can do a lot of things together, right? You can drop in, you can go for eliminations, but that leaves you pretty open to an early death, right? Now he's got a decent aim, but it looks like he might be a little slow when it comes to it. I'll note he's also aiming with his right analog stick. I don't know if I have my camera on. Let's see. No, of course not. All right. Well, we're going to cut it on. Cut it off. Cut it on. Hopefully that fixes it. But the big thing is I talk about this quite a bit. If you're on any controller, you're going to have a hard time aiming with your right analog stick, especially at a distance. What I would recommend to you is right here you can see the controller instead of just aiming right here move just a hair right just a hair with your left analog stick that way you can move in to the shot you're trying to take if someone's standing or moving a little bit uh like standing still or they're moving just a little bit it's easier to move into it with your left analog stick than it is going to be with your right analog stick now i will say glocks has a decent position right sitting smack dab Middle of the circle here, obviously not like way up here. But my point is, is he's over in a decent spot. This is most likely going to push toward uh, Hattica Farms or military base, but he's got the guy right behind him. He has a sidewinder, which is not a close range weapon. Puts him at quite a disadvantage. A guy just dropped down beside him. He's going to be around this corner here, most likely. And he runs away. All right. I, I don't know. I don't know how this stuff happens and how people get away with this, but it's truly incredible. <laughs> Good old Glocks. It looks like he's going to wait for his loadout. If you didn't know, most players, like a, like 70% of his players, will wait to get their loadout. And that's because they don't really see the point in getting their loadout early. I, I understand the thought process behind it. Because if you don't have to get your loadout and spend the cash on it or loot up very quickly at the beginning of the game, it's a little bit more leisure, a little bit more laid back. But that means you're at a disadvantage to any high-skilled... Skilled? Skilled high skilled player that ends up getting their loadout early right they grab their loadout and there's still three minutes left in that first red circle if you look at the mini map you can see what i'm saying that little red circle right there around the one that means the circle's moving in, in. oh my gosh <laughs> what is he doing uh it means the circle's moving in so on that red circle at 14 seconds left your loadout's going to drop in for free but you drop into the game at two minutes on a white circle and then there's four full minutes on the first moving circle so my recommendation to you is to always try and get your loadout first and the way that you can do that is you can drop at some spots like uh, shaheen manor uh, around this where i'm gonna go watch exactly where i'm i'm pointing right here 
right here and right here as well as right over here if you go to those places at Shaheen Manor, you're going to be able to hit four caches in the ground, and that's going to give you every single time enough money to get your loadout. Guaranteed. This guy's going to lose because he's running out in the open. It was expected. I, like, I don't know what to tell you, but we still get to spectate him, as you can see, because we're going to follow him into the gulag, which is one of my favorite things. I love to see how people play the gulag. Most of the time, they play it really slow. They're going to crouch walk up to the left or the right, and then they're going to wait for the enemy to push. The enemy... Okay, all right, all right. I was a little confused, but usually they play very slow, let the other uh, par a person make the mistake, and that's a great play. It's just that sometimes the other player is a little bit better. So like I said, slow push up, left or right. Slowly moves up left. Oh, the running is huge. In a situation like this, I'm gonna go for the cash every time, but this guy was just not good enough to go for the cash. And that, that's all right, that's all right. Now we get to spectate the one. The only. Oh. Sliding through. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. All right. This guy's got one elimination. The guy in the gulag was his only elimination. He's going to grab his loadout right here. Shaquille O'Meal has been spectating this whole time, by the way, which is, which I find hilarious. Uh, he just timed out, which is even funnier that he dev aired out of the game. But he had been spectating, which means he watched me splat the ground. That's too funny. So he drops in. He's going to be rocking, as you can see, the DTIR. My guess is his other weapon's going to be the static. Uh, his loadout's a little interesting. He's got a different stock on it than we're used to seeing. I think the, the barrel might also be the Sanctum barrel instead of the Rifleman. So this is a different loadout than we're used to seeing, but he's got one, two, three, four attachments, which to me means he's also running mono ammunition. If you look at this ammo right here, you can literally see the left. He's got the quartermaster suppressor. He's got the uh, the barrel. He's got the, the, the stock and he's got a, a magazine on his weapon, giving him 30 bullets instead of 40, which is a weird choice. In my opinion, my guess is that he doesn't have it leveled up. There's no way to see his level. Um, by the way, uh, in these videos, I am really not going to be reporting people anymore unless I am for certain that they are cheating. And the reason why is if you didn't see my last spectating video, the one that came out yesterday, I highly recommend you do so because in that video, I reported a player who was a low level and had high ranked guns. Come to find out, picked up the guns off the ground. The guy was not cheating. He did get shadow banned for seven days, most likely, but he's shadow banned for sure from one singular report. And it, it just, it goes to show, by the way, I'm currently shadow banned in Black Ops 6. I haven't been able to play since, uh, Sunday of double XP weekend this last weekend. I got shadow banned so fast. It is what it is. Like I am a, a part of the, the kind of people that would get shadow banned. Someone that plays at a, a high level, you know? But this guy that I was spectating in the last video, again, I highly recommend you watch it. He was snappy. The reason why he was snappy, mouse and keyboard. So he was very accurate on that initial shot. And that's what made me feel because in spectating mode, it looks like cheating. So from now on, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious when it comes to reporting people. But if I pull this up, it's not necessarily because I am reporting someone. It's because if you see at the top right there, it shows their level. Um, however, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. What you can also do if you want to know the best players in the match or the most reported players in the match is you can press your pause button. And in the bottom right, if you look, uh, it'll say report players. So you click that button and then you can see who the most reported players in the lobby are. Uh, and these are my recent lobbies, the most reported players, of course. Well, those were in alphabetical order, but you know, recent lobbies, most reported players, stuff like that. Sometimes it's just the best players in the lobbies. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the most reported player. It, it can just mean the best players in the lobbies, but usually the best and the most reported fall under the same category. Either way, we've got our boy right here, uh, a poorly put together DTR. He has no uh, camo. It doesn't have a camo, which to me means, well, one, crazy that the other guy did not get that elimination because it took forever for Sliden to actually hit his shots right there. But to me, it means he's leveling this weapon up, which is why he doesn't have everything on it. If he has a different stock and <laughs> a different a different uh what is it called barrel and it's just because he wants to that's actually pretty interesting 
Maybe he does have a leveled up and he just didn't throw a camo on it, but usually most players will put a camo on a weapon that they like. I, I do it every single time. At least the mastery camo that you get for grinding out uh, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, 250,000 experience on a weapon. By the way, he's sitting on pretty much no cash right now, as you can see. And by the way, if you don't know, I do edit these live with my stream deck. You can see that I zoom to my face. I go back to the gameplay, full screen my face. Uh, I can show me zoomed in a little bit more, me zoomed in even more, me zoomed in. Oh, this one's a little bit slower. But yeah, I do this live every single game. Uh, every single time I spectate, but it, it, I've got things like the uh, the player tag zooming to the center of the screen. I've got the mini map. This is where the kill feed would be. Player count, health, and ammo. That's always on my, my stream deck. So that's how I edit them live. And so if you ever see me like pressing a button, even while I'm playing, sometimes I'm just zooming into my face. Uh, a lot of people think that I'm on mouse and keyboard. My mouse is over here. It's actually attached to my other computer right now. I have a, a switcher onto my desk that I use. But either way, this guy's a little bit slow. He, he really has no idea what he's doing. And this is why I always say you need to drop into the game with a plan. This guy does not have a plan. Interestingly enough, he might get a free kill on this guy right here. He needs to stop laying down. I don't know why he's... Gas is closing in. Get to the new safe zone. Brother. Oh my God. This is insane. I just like, I don't even know how to react. The, so here's another thing I have to talk about quite a bit. And that is trigger discipline. The way that you can tell a, a player is very good is trigger discipline. I, I would love to really go over in the future, maybe a video from uh, Dracota. He, he dropped the world record for the most eliminations in Verdansk Warzone, right? Way back in the day. It was something like 52, 51 elimination. It was ridiculous, basically. When I watched that gameplay, one thing that I noticed is that even though he was going for the most eliminations that he had ever gotten and that anyone had ever gotten in Warzone solos, he had trigger discipline. Sometimes he would let someone pass by so that he could get this person when they were in a bad situation. Like, let's say, you know, you've got a player that is behind cover. If if you know that they're going to push out because that is the smart move, like, say, the circles moving in like this guy has to move in. If you know that player has to move, you wait until they're out in the open, then you take your shot. That's called trigger discipline. Another part of trigger discipline is also knowing when to take the shot, uh, like quickly, right? So that guy's gonna land on our boy right now, by the way, or he's gonna go right over him. I'm not 100% sure, but there's a guy that just took a launcher. I think he's just going in. All right, there's people, he's on his right. He's on his right. He's on his right. How do these guys just run right beside each other and have no idea? It, 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 it blows my mind. But another thing is ensuring that when you, you take your shot, you take it fast. When you know you have the chance to get the elimination, you, you don't even have to think about it. It should become second nature. That was obviously a very clean kill. I'll give it to him. But it should become second nature to be like, all right, I know that that's it. I'm going to do it. And it, you, it's a split second, milliseconds is what it should be. Less than a half a second is what it should take for you to start shooting at an enemy whenever you know that you can eliminate them, right? But it takes a lot of practice, a lot of trigger discipline. A lot of players, what they'll do is they'll shoot at everything. You know, you see a player, you're like, oh, better shoot him. It's not always worth it. This is actually very interesting, by the way. He, he has the scope on his sniper that allows him to figure out the exact height at which he needs to set his bullet next time he ads's i'm going to show you what i'm talking about i'm going to zoom into the center of the screen so that you can see it but there's this little dot and what he does when he goes to hold his breath it will uh it'll go ahead and move that dot based on the distance the enemy is to see the exact position he needs to place his scope where he can hit the shot exactly where he's trying to hit it, right? 
So next time he ADSs with a sniper, I recommend you pay attention to that. This is a really crazy scope, and I'd love to use it. It's actually the exact attachment that is the reason Sally's a dog blew up on YouTube. That attachment came out during Almazra, and what happened is Sally made a video on that, and it got a ton of views. Now, it's not his most viewed video now, but it is the video that chain reactioned his channel getting pushed in the algorithm more. Uh, and when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's actually really cool to see something like that in real time. But again, some like that right there is is absolutely a moment where you should be able to get the free kill. But he was laying down, which means he's not moving. My guess is, by the way, this guy's on controller. And if you don't know, moving with your left analog stick, like I mentioned earlier, not only is that going to help you aim more accurately and without having to flick your right analog stick back and forth, this guy already moved. He already crossed for sure. But it'll also give you rotational aim assist. And what rotational aim assist is, is when you're aiming at an enemy, it's going to kind of drag onto the enemy as you move. You get more of that the closer that you are, and you get more of it whenever you're uh, not ADS and you're within a certain distance. But that was kind of impressive that he slid to the side whenever the other guy tried to drop shot. That was pretty smart. I, I will give him that. But it's incredibly useful whenever you're aiming at people moving through the sky, because if you ever see creators that are shooting at people in the sky, you always notice they've got just a little micro movement of then just walking a little bit. Just a little. It's really hard to notice if you're not paying attention for it, but that's how they get just the, the little bit of aim assist that lets them know they're right on target and they can continue shooting. And that's why they're able to get people out of the sky. It's not because they're just using the right analog stick to aim. Of course, they have to have incredible aim, but that's not the only thing they're doing. Now, this guy's going to go ahead and move in. What I'm going to note is there's a guy right inside, I'm pretty sure, down below. This is maybe not the greatest play. I'm going to say it. I, I don't think the circle goes here. It might, but usually the circle just hits right there dead center. There's a guy on his right, right outside of that, uh, that fence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw it coming. He, like, there was just no way he won that because his game sense was just so poor. Either way, we're going to be spectating J.M. Kimbo, who is getting an elimination right now as we speak. Of course, he's rocking the static HV. My guess is secondary DTIR. And he's rocking the scummiest version of the DTIR that you can have, the one with the hollow therm. I will note he doesn't have mono rounds, so he can't shoot through walls. Got a guy on his right. The circle, by the way, did come over here. So, incredible plays on the other guy. I was wrong about that. He does have a Simtex. What he needs to do is play for that Simtex. Oh, that guy got stuck on a wall. That's tough, dude. You have a Simtex still. I don't know why you're not going for it. Super weird. If you have a Simtex or a Thermite, those two things usually take down a Riot Shielder. However, a Thermite is a guaranteed knock, but the Simtex is not a guaranteed knock if they have... Uh, uh, it's not called bomb squad. I can't think of EOD EOD. So be weary of that. That's why I always recommend that you run thermites. Uh, the perks that I recommend is combat scout restock. Uh, what do we do? Restock slide of hand and mountaineer. Those are the four perks. I'm always going to recommend to people, especially at least for solos. I think they're great in other modes as well, but for solos, it's so important to have combat scout because if you shoot someone and they try and run away, it's going to mark them for like three seconds so that you can get that elimination so that you can chase them so that you can shoot them through walls so that it looks like you're cheating so that you can get shadow banned. Of course. Uh, either way, old JM Kimbo is going for a shot on a guy that has a sniper. He pops a precision instead of instead of just looting up, he had an opportunity to get the free elimination. If you pop a, a PA on someone, they're going to be forced to move. And would you look at that? The guy pushed him and he got incredibly lucky that the other guy had no idea how to aim. Jam Kimbo right now, if you look, has, uh, has nine eliminations, 12 spectators. Pretty crazy, actually. Pretty crazy. Me being one of them, I'm not going to report him. I'm just trying to see. He's a level 929. Uh, he's got a self-revive. He's got a durable gas mask. One thing I will also recommend to players, if you have a durable gas mask, do your best not to play the storm until the end of the game. Because if you play the storm early, you could end up losing. By the way, different guy that he eliminated earlier. That guy with the sniper is the one that just shot at the dude right beside him. The guy with the sniper is going to have to push in. So he's playing this very well. My recommendation in this situation is to go to the rooftop. It's a great opportunity. By the way, you can't get uh, you can't get aim assist through a fence. Fences, even though that 
it's completely visible. Like you can see your enemy through the fence. Uh, you will not get aim assist. That's just how it works. You lose aim assist on anything that is considered a solid object, even if it's wall bangable, right? That's crazy. Holy freaking moly. Free elimination. That guy's an absolute moron. Good God. I think JM Kimbo wins this game unless he makes an incredibly dumb play. And most of Warzone, we'll talk about this most likely in the next game. Most of Warzone is all about taking advantage of opportunities when you see that your enemy makes a mistake. How did he take the gas mask off? I think he has that set to, to manual, which is really not the greatest idea. I like the bunker buster. The guy's gonna be forced to basically run into it. He's probably gonna crack his armor right here. Nope, the guy rotated. Great play. Kimbo, Kimbo, you need to hit your shots, brother. It's so upset. Oh my God. I would be so mad if I made that terrible play right there. That's tough, dude. What he did, and, and we're about to move into game number two, but what he did is he, he pushed out in the open, no cover whatsoever. He literally had a head glitch right beside him, but if he would have taken that head glitch, he wins the game. He pushes out in the open to a guy that's already got the advantage because he's waiting for him to push. He loses that. All right, on to game number two. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to game number two. We're going to be taking on the Boston King. Yeah, so he's AFK. Hey, buddy! Buddy, what are you doing? This is a chair! His name's Steve! Oh God, <laughs> Shout out to Steve. All right, welcome into game number two. We're gonna be diving in, but the question of the day is this. What is your game plan when you drop into a game of Call of Duty Warzone? What is your game plan, ladies and gentlemen? Splat. All right, that felt good. That, that felt good. That felt good. It, it felt good. Are you ready? Game number two. Also, if you haven't already, do do me the kindest favor. Hit that subscribe button. It'd be greatly appreciated because we are working our way to 400,000 on the channel. We are now spectating Tomeo. 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 Spe spectating Tomeo. And, and we're looking to see if this person dropped in with a plan. I am going to be the goose that ganders and say no. I don't think this dude's got a plan. He's, he's literally he's sitting behind a table. Well, this is incredible. This is incredible. Would y'all be open to me dropping a, uh, a section of my Discord, like making a section of my Discord where you all could submit gameplays in at least 1080p recordings, please, for the love of God. Drop your gameplays of your top 15s. I had this uh, this recommended to me by, I want to say Sypha. Sypha, I believe, over on Twitter recommended this. But I would like to note, obviously... I know this is something I've tried before, but I might have to give it a shot. I want to know your opinion. Do you want me to try and do some spectating of the the, the viewers gameplay? So where you are going to drop a top 15, top 20, uh, top 10 even. And you want to know what you're doing well, what you're doing wrong. I'd be happy to review that gameplay. If you want to do it, let me know in a comment down below. We might open it up, but make sure to join discord.gg slash expel. Uh, that way... If we do end up doing it, I will make an announcement on there so that you know. It's also the greatest way to get every notification for every video that I post. This is a quick heads up. They always post in Discord every single time, and you do get a notification for it, guaranteed. Tomeo is an absolute goofball who played with people he shouldn't have played with. Either way, we're going to see him in the gulag. Good old 420, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, look, every video, I have to say it, every video, always the dude that's in the Snoop Dogg skin or got Zaza or got 420 in their name is lost in the sauce, high as a kite, and does not play well. Once again, you might think you're part of that 1% that plays well, and maybe you are. But most people, while inebriated, do not play well. In fact, they play much worse, and I would ask that you don't put that on random teammates. Continue playing solos, which is what I love about Tomeo, who didn't even go for the freaking cash in the Dulok! Oh my god, there was literally like 15 grand. He could have gotten his loadout. He literally could have gotten his loadout way before the loadout dropped. He could have had a ton of money even just to get UAVs or get a gulag token anything would have been better than immediately going for the afk elimination in the gulag against a guy who literally just timed out are you freaking kidding me bro sorry sorry i just 
Sometimes people do things that make absolutely zero sense. It's like there's zero, zero thoughts that go through their head whenever they're playing. And, and, and I just don't get it. Snoop Dogg scan, by the way. Snoop Dogg scan. Snoop, Snoop, Snoop mother flipping dog scan, by the way. Let me just point this out because I swear to God, I'm tired of being right about this. Please give me a Snoop Dogg scan that knows how to play the game. Give me one. One Snoop Dogg skin. By the way, I have an x Plus video coming out where I actually died to a Snoop Dogg skin. It was crazy. It, it, to be fair, I pushed him with no plates and egoed it because it was a Snoop Dogg skin, and that's on me, but... <sighs> crazy, crazy. At least we get to spectate ZNXSHTV. ZNash TV. Let's see if this guy's live right now. Twitch.tv ZNXSHTV. No. No. All right. So what's the what's the point here? He's level three ninety four, rocking a DTIR with mono rounds, which he obviously got out of a chest, and he's running the. Uh, if you look at the bottom right, he's running the FJX horse. Oh, that's a. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm gonna stop yelling right now. <sighs> I just like am incredibly tired of being proven right on this, while everyone in the comments is like. No! I think there's a there's a certain amount, right? I, th I think there's like, just like with alcohol, you get a little loose, right? Just like with alcohol, you'll get a little loose when you're buzzed. And if you're a little buzzed with the ganja, you're gonna be a little looser. You're gonna play more naturally. You're not gonna be as freaked out, but that's as far as it goes. I don't think anybody's out there dropping 20 bombs because they smoke up, you know? That's really what it comes down to. I'm gonna move on from this, but I have time and time again proven in videos and through thousands of hours of game time that that's exactly what happens. It would be very ironic if every player that was in the Snoop Dogg skin, every single one that I've spectated and all of them with 420 and Zaza in their name, none of them were high. But I don't see that being real. Um, Probably, you know, and then, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I've never... <laughs> I don't know that. that probably looked really dumb to anybody this moment, but I, I got no idea what was going on. By the way, Nash here, breathing up a storm. Is he okay? Is he good? Is, do you think he's going to make it? I don't think he's... Uh, he needs to do some cardio. My God. Old boy needs to hit the gym. Something. Get this man alive out there. Look at look at old Zaza there laying on the ground to the right. You see <laughs> you see our boy? You see him just laying there all dead? <laughs> what a goober, dude. What an absolute goober. Uh again, let, let's let's rotate back. Let's have a little conversation, like I was saying earlier, which is dropping in with a plan. This guy got his free loadout. He dropped him with zero plan. He's sitting in the middle of the map, just hoping people push him, which is not a good plan. What you can do is you can rotate around the map. And to be fair, if you don't have game sense, my recommendation is you go into plunder and you learn the areas of the map first. You memorize where people tend to hide, where people tend to, uh, you know, congregate. That would be what I recommend first. But if you need some gunfight skill and you really want to win the game, uh, up until the fifth circle, what I would recommend... There's literally... Are we... Look at this. Look, he's going to drop. Oh, my God. Oh, my... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, this is rough, dude. This is rough. My recommendation to you, what I was going to say is, instead of sitting smack dab in the center of the map where plenty of people are going to shoot at you because you've been there for quite some time, you should be the one that catches people off guard. What do I mean by that? I mean, grab yourself a UAV, grab yourself a heartbeat sensor, uh, grab maybe like some portable radars and rotate around the map. You can either do this with a, an LTV. I don't recommend any other vehicle. Do it with an LTV or you can do it with, uh, what are the launchers called? RDBs? Cardi Bs? Nice elimination right there. That guy was lost in the sauce, but you can do it with either of those two things. You rotate around the map and you do your best to learn how to take high ground on enemies, take proper positioning on enemies, like figure out how to take those gunfights where you get a shot on somebody, you know that you can push it and you take that, that, that push and you get the uh, elimination on the player. 
Things like that are going to make you better at gunfights. It's also going to have the uh, the same effect, like making it better on you whenever it gets to the end of the game. Uh, whenever it gets to fifth circle, really, you should slow down. The second fifth circle happens, you need to slow it down. But when you get near the end of the game, what you can do, a bunch of people just timed out, but what you can do is slow down and find a good spot. But until that point, you should be pushing people. That way, there's less people at the end of the game that you have to fight. I don't know if I'm lagging. No, it's just this guy. But if you get to the end of the game and there's less people to fight, then it immediately makes it easier for you to get the win because when you shoot at people, you're going to have less of a chance of getting shot by a third party, a fourth party, a fifth party, which tends to happen in solos. That's the exact reason I go for elimination and eliminations in solos. Why I go for high kill gameplays. It's less about being impressive and more about the fact that if I don't do it, if I am not clearing out the lobby ahead of time, most people would just wait until the end and then third party me. It tends to happen when I'm on about seven or less eliminations. I was just so lucky. That, like, just so unbelievably lucky that he got that elimination. That could have been bad. Oh my god. He was a freaking nuke skin. He had specialist. That, ironically, that would be the perfect example of exactly what you shouldn't do. What I was talking about earlier, like fighting people, that guy has too big of an ego, right? He, he thinks that no matter what he's going to, he does, that his gun skill is going to keep him alive. That is a mistake. Gun skill and game sense are two very different things. They work together, but if you have one more than the other, you need game sense, not gun skill. That guy trusted his gun skill too much. When he dropped in on the enemy, what he did is he dropped in the worst possible spot. There was no cover. What he should have done is drop down below the stairs and then rotated around, wrapped behind him and shot him from a head glitch. Instead, he landed right on him and sure, he almost got him. And I'm sure that's why he does what he does. But it is a terrible play. Look at this. Oh, sorry. Look at that. There he goes. There he goes. You got it. You just, just hit your shots. Oh my God, dude. Why are you mortaring? Just reload your gun, you moron. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I gotta stop being mean. He's just, he's just hoping. It's like, it's, it's not. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing, bro? To a certain extent, I think it comes down to people just being way too scared. Right? And maybe that's why you should have a little gun. <laughs> All right, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I do not condone this in the slightest. I will never recommend that you drink alcohol or you do any kind of drugs. Trust me. It's not, it's not something I'm going to recommend to people. I think living life completely sober is probably one of the best things you can do if you do not have a chronic condition in your life. I'm not saying that you should if you have a chronic condition but i'm absolutely not going to judge you sometimes life is a little too rough but I, I i think that some people are a little too nervous obviously it comes with playtime he's just he is just so focused on that but obviously it comes with playtime as to whether or not you are going to be nervous when you're playing call of duty and all i can say is hop in and just don't care Go for, like, the best gameplay you can, but literally, just don't care. It, at the end of the day, you're playing a video game. Don't stress it too much. Because if you're stressing it too much, you're going you're gonna to be rigid, right? You're going to be you're gonna be holding your controller a little too tight. You're going to be pressing buttons you don't mean to press because you're a little shaky. It's not something you want to do. What I will recommend... This guy down to his right. Oh, absolutely free. Absolutely free, my guy. Good Lord have mercy. I'm about to bust. Oh! That guy has moved to the left. If I zoom in, hold on. I can't show it. If I zoom in, you see that? <laughs> I, try, I tried to show you. If I, if you look, he's over there on, nope, down below, down below, down below. Don't shoot at the guy not shooting at you. Shoot at the guy shooting at you. That's what you do every time. So there's a, there's an order of operations whenever you get multiple people, right? There is literally an order of operations that you should follow every time you have multiple people 
in a certain vicinity. Step one, fight the closest person to you. Whoever is the closest, you should always fight because they are the immediate threat. Because if you don't fight them, most likely they're gonna turn and eliminate you if you shoot at somebody else. Step two, shoot the guy shooting at you. Instead of taking cover and, and, and running away, right? In, in a lot of these situations, you really just need to, what the heck just happened? It just kicked me out of the freaking game on my end, hold on. Sorry, sorry, it's fixed, it's fixed. But uh, what you should do is you take the closest person, you take the far person that's shooting at you, and then you take the far person that has no idea what's going on. Uh, but if you can, let's say you're playing solo duos, always shoot the guy looking at you every time. That's what you need to do. You have combat scout and you're missing those shots, brother. You gotta lock in, homie. Nash, you you need to you need to lock it in, man. You're you're playing you're playing a little too risque, dude. A little too risque. My God, the guy's going right back to the buy station. You're just letting him do it. This man is so lost in the sauce. He just has no idea, and he can't get shots on for the life of him. He's probably gonna die right here. He is so lucky that he has a gas mask. He is so lucky, but I do hate that if you look at his health, he's wasting that gas mask. Just wasting it. Just, ugh. So gross. If you have a durable, you really want to hold that until the end of the game. What he could have done, he had one more thermite. He could have tossed that thing. Could have gotten the elimination on that. Jump in the storm, toss it, run out. That's that's really what would have saved his life. Or just move in, let the guy push through the storm, and shoot him. He could have played it up by the time that the guy was up. He would have been inside the storm, would have been healthy. Could have caught the guy as he was running in. He would have still gotten the elimination, but he would have had more gas mask available to him. Right there, that is good trigger discipline. He didn't immediately shoot at the guy in the sky, which is a really good play. He's got a guy up above. He he just saw it. The guy took the zip. He saw he saw the tippity tip of that guy's leg. He knows the guy's up top, but he's out in the open, focusing too much on the guy up top. He needs to go ahead and rotate in. If we check this map right here, you can see he needs to move in. Here's a guy across. Good audio for Nash. I'll give him that. I don't know how he can hear anything with his character going. <sighs> yeah. So. Again, one of those things is, like I said, aim assist works better whenever, you, whenever you're moving. It's called rotational aim assist. It's the most powerful kind of aim assist. That guy in front of him, he started shooting, and the DCR might not have a ton of recoil, but it still has recoil. So if you should... Th see, that's bad trigger discipline. He was never going to get that elimination. Now he's shooting at too many people. He's giving his position away. He, he just pissed off the guy that was flying in. The guy that was flying in, if he doesn't get an assist, is probably going to be looking back to try and fight him if he gets the other elimination on the guy that was shooting at him uh, as well. It's just... It, it's a tough situation to be in because you really don't want to piss people off. He's at fifth circle. He needs to find a spot and he needs to find it fast. He's going to have to rotate up here most likely. Circle usually doesn't stay down here. He knows that he's got a guy in a, a bounty contract right beside him. I mean, he's he's in a tough spot, man. This is a pickle right here. Just sitting on uh, eight eliminations, 15 players left, four spectators, three of which not me. <laughs> he knew which zip line takes you to the right spot. I like that. FJX is really good, but our boy Nash just isn't. He, he just, he's not good enough, realistically. Like, Nash was making weird plays. He wasn't in the right position, and he was guaranteed to get eliminated. At some point, he was not going to win that game. Either way, we've got Camp and Carl, our boy. Old Carl with... Hold on. I'm sorry. 16? 16? He's shooting a guy up top? Is that a PKM, bro? What is that What is that gun called? My boy's... Look at this. He's dropping a PKM right now. A pull, he's got a he's got a pulling yacht right there, bro. He's about to go crazy on these folks. This is, a, this is an Iceman Isaac loadout. That's a free kill if he just shoots into the guy he's got he's you gotta hit your shots yeah so we're i just want to discuss discuss with you about hitting your shots bro i just if you could just hit him just god dang it hit your shots carl carl's in a decent position the issue is he's gonna have to rotate in if you check the mini map right here you can see he's got a pretty far way to go he does have a gas mask but again he's gonna end up utilizing this gas mask earlier than he wants to which means he's gonna be unable to go for for gas plays in late game. He's got about three people shooting at him. He shot way too long at the guy up top. If he gets caught by, yep, literally every player. There's actually two guys teaming on the right-hand side. Over there, two guys teaming. He's gonna get caught. Yeah, Definitely they're teaming. You're a grill. My high alert is going crazy. <laughs> three. Oh, game assist right there. Whoa, guy in here. Whoa. The guy behind me. 
out of uh, I need a self. What's happening? Four Anybody guys teaming. So focused on plating, he forgot to reload his gun. That's literally why you die every time. This is why I talk about the order of operations for for when you're in gunfights, dude. My friend. Oh my goodness! Always reload first. You can plate up after. It's better to get your gun fully reloaded and one plate than to have two plates and no ammo. Just to be clear, always think about that. Reload your gun. Oh shit! Three people. Three people left right here. By the way. Oh my god. Oh my god, girl! Excuse me. You're excused. You're about to die. You're about to it die. You, okay, no, so not. what she can do... Where the hell did she get a smoke? You can literally see in the bottom right, she doesn't have any smokes in her inventory. There's a bomb drone. The bomb drone goes for the guy on the right. This guy on the left peeks out in a terrible... Okay. Yeah. So she's rocking mono oh. ammo and she got rid of the stock. The stock's better than the... Uh, the stock is always better than the what is it called holy moly the 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 barrel always have the stock on the dtr over the barrel because the stock does a lot more for your recoil reduction on this gun which is definitely necessary he's on your right you're about to get sniped you're about to get sniped you're about to get sniped no girl sorry you need to oh, lock in no. he's got third parted you need to lock in oh my god I'm stupid he got the win what are you uh, freaking kidding This is her, the best female player in the game, dude. The best female player in the game. Girl teamed up for the whole match. Holy moly, that's crazy. That's crazy. What a wild match. Listen, hey, we greatly appreciate we're working our way to 400,000 on this channel. If you could hit that subscribe button, do it. Do it, please. Could you please? Hit it. All right, I'm just kidding. Hey, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have an incredible day. We've got more spectating content coming. We've got the new integration with Black Ops 6 coming. So if you're not subscribed, notifications on, you're going to miss the videos. I'll see you there.